An unusual cooldown is moving in over a lot of the United States. What might surprise you is that the long-range pattern looks to be fairly similar to what is happening this week. This video will break down the near-term and long-range pattern. Before I jump into a breakdown of this week's pattern ahead, here's a quick reminder that right here at One Nation Weather, I provide accurate info, custom graphics, and no extra hype in every forecast. If you do enjoy this video and you have not already, I'd love it if you'd hit the like button and see if you're subscribed to the channel down below. With that being said, I want to now jump into this video by overviewing how the atmospheric jet stream pattern will affect what occurs at the surface in the USA. As we go through the early to mid part of this week, the overarching trend in the jet stream is going to be this big U-shaped dip coming in out of Canada, diving down through the central and then towards the eastern United States. This dip, better known as a trough in weather terms, is going to be the train ride for cooler than average temperatures, which will cover at least half of the United States as we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and beyond. One smaller theme in energy in the atmosphere that's going to also support a chance for storms for some folks, that's going to be this weaker flow of jet stream-like energy moving in out of the southeast Pacific over some high pressure around northern Mexico and Texas, and then crashing down into the lower side of our polar jet stream energy from there, as this energy works through the southwest U.S., the southern and central plains, and then eventually towards the southeast and Gulf Coast regions. Those zones could remain a little bit active on the far southern fringes of the cooldown. That will continue to be a trend as we really see this pattern last all week long. Before I discuss the cooldown in more detail, I do want to discuss the active weather that will be ongoing for a few folks this week. As we go into the Monday time frame, you can see that especially the southwest U.S. as well as the south central plains will be zones where we're going to have the best chance for storm coverage to elevate. That's going to be as we see that energy working its way on up out of the eastern Pacific and then kind of crashing on over into places like Kansas, Oklahoma, as well as Missouri and Arkansas. All of the zones that I have the arrows over on screen right here, from Arizona over to Arkansas and in points in between, these are going to be spots where we get the best chance for flooding on and off from Monday through Tuesday and even into Wednesday, Thursday, and beyond. In fact, around Wednesday night into Thursday is where we're going to get a bigger kick of moisture that makes its way off the eastern slopes of the Rockies and then crashes down into the central U.S. That means places like Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas will get a very elevated chance for some heavier storms. Those could at least induce isolated severe weather, as well as a pretty high potential for some flooding to get ongoing as we finish the week as that general boundary continues crashing to the south and east even zones like the gulf coast and the carolinas might even get a chance for some storms around friday i'll discuss the active part of this week's pattern more in a video likely on tuesday for now let's take a look at the temperature trends that will be ongoing not only through the early week time frame like this graphic says but really even as we go towards the mid and late week time frames other than some warmth building in places like the far southern U.S. or in the northwestern part of the country, everybody else is going to see that jet stream dip funneling in cooler than average temperatures. Temperatures will be 5, 10, 15 degrees below average pretty much all week long from the plains to the east coast. With those anomalies in mind, let's take a look at what they equate to in terms of actual temperatures over the next several days, starting with a look at the Monday time frame. It's going to be a cold start to the day as indicated by these forecasted morning minimum temperatures from parts of Montana and the Dakotas diving down to the Midwest. From the upper Midwest diving down into the Ohio Valley, we're going to have plenty of 40s and 50s widespread. As you go on up there to the tip top northern part of Minnesota, it's even going to be down in the 30s. Possible frost conditions very early for that to be happening in northeast Minnesota or northern Wisconsin, for example. And it's going to be cool in the afternoon in those same spots. We're going to have 60s in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. As you go a little bit further south, it's going to be around 70 to 75 degrees over a lot of the Central Plains, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and even a lot of the northeastern states. Closer down towards the Gulf Coast and the southeast coast of the U.S., the cool down will not be there just quite yet. The cool down and the cold front pulling it in are just going to be moving off the coast into Monday night. But look at what that means in terms of relief by the time we go into Tuesday morning. Even on down here into the southeastern and mid-Atlantic states, there's going to be widespread upper 50s and low to mid 60s. Further north, widespread low 50s and even some upper 40s across the board. As you go back into parts of the Mountain West and the Northwest U.S., that's where you see that shift to the warmer than average temperatures. It is going to be warmer in high elevations of Washington than it is in high elevations of New York on a morning like Tuesday morning, as it's going to be 70 out in the Northwest U.S. to start the day, warming up to near 100 in the afternoon. 
That's an anomaly, though, because look how cool two-thirds of the country is really going to be. More 70s, very far south for this time of the year, even for highs on a Tuesday afternoon. And it will continue. Here we go, Wednesday morning, more 40s and 50s, some of them breaking record cold lows down here into places like the Deep South and the Ohio Valley. We're going to have 60s and 70s once again over a lot of these same zones into Wednesday afternoon. And the cool down continues. Here's Thursday afternoon. More near a 75, possibly closer to 80 degree readings for a lot of the north central and central U.S. Plenty of mid 70s all the way on over here to the Virginia coast, the New York coast, all the way up to the Maine coast. Just plenty of cooler than average temperatures, very mild numbers for this time of the year going around. What makes this even more interesting? It appears the pattern is calling reinforcements. Let me show you what I mean by playing through this mid-level pattern forecast from the European model. The blue area is where the jet stream is going to be dipping down anomalously as we go through the early and mid part of this week. Of course, it is already known that the central and eastern U.S. will be experiencing that, and that's what's going to bring the cooldown. Look at what happens, though, as we go out of Wednesday and then towards Thursday and Friday. You see that renewed area of blues diving down out of southern and eastern Canada. That is another dip in the jet stream that's likely going to surge on down as we get to the very end of this week. If that does indeed occur, it will briefly pull up a little bit more moisture and possibly bring a few storms through zones like the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic, for example. But then it will settle in with more cool, dry air that will get pulled down for likely days beyond Friday and into the weekend and next week. We can better visualize this change by looking at the temperature anomaly forecast from the GFS Ensemble Blended Guidance. Notice that there is already going to be a cool down with temperatures around 10 degrees below average already in place for a lot of the eastern half of the country. That's going to be as we go out of Wednesday and then towards Thursday and Friday. Watch what happens as we go out of Thursday and Friday and then towards Saturday though from the north. You can see that secondary cool down slowly sliding in. And as it sinks into place, it's going to result in continued below average temperatures that likely last all the way through the end of the upcoming weekend to a similar extent. Of course, guidance has a little bit less certainty as you go further down the line, so that's why the blues fade out a bit. But look at this. This is even as we go towards the very last day of the month on Sunday, August 31st. Well below average temperatures are showing up over a lot of at least zones from the Mississippi Valley to the East Coast. Here's a look at what that pattern means specifically for next weekend, so in the 5 to 7 day range. It's going to be very similar to this weekend where cooler than average temperatures will be sinking down and we will continue to see that dry air be paired along with it from especially zones like the Central Plains over to the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic. With that being said, that brings me to the end of this video update where I'd like to remind you, of course, on the big headlines. Number one that we talked about in this video is that cooler conditions and lots of dry air are ahead this week for most parts of the country. The one exception will be as you go out west where it will just be warmer than average and then of course we're going to see stormy and wet conditions for zones like the southern corridor at times this week. Cool down reinforcements look likely to back the current cool down up by the time we go towards next weekend. September as a result may start similar to how August ends. Since there is nothing major going on out in the tropics that's worth talking about, that brings me to the end of video reminders, one of them being, of course, to check out WeatherBell if you have not already. There's a free trial link down below that will give you access to the same model maps that I use on my videos at your fingertips. In addition to that, here's a quick reminder of what I discussed earlier on. If you want accurate info, if you want custom graphics, if you want no extra hype in each and every forecast, subscribe, turn on those notifications below. I'd also love it if you'd hit that like button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. God bless. One Nation Web. Wait, you're still here? If you are, type three letters, O-N-W, and I'm going to pin your comment if you're the first one to do that. One Nation Weather.